गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू एस एस टी सो सिंपल ट्यूटोरियल इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी सॉ वॉट इज मेड बाई टर्म्स ऑफ क्रेडिट वी ऑल्सो सॉ दी वेराइटी ऑफ क्रेडिट अरेंजमेंट एंड ऑल्सो दी को ऑपरेटिव सोसाइटीज एज ए चीप सोर्स ऑफ क्रेडिट टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द फॉर्मल सोर्सेज ऑफ क्रेडिट इन इंडिया इन दिस क्लास वी विल कवर थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन वन differences between formal and informal sources of credit two in what ways rbi supervise the functioning of banks three cheap and affordable credit is crucial for the development of country now in the previous class we saw the various sources of credit namely banks money lenders land owners cooperative societies etc we can now group them as formal sector loans and informal sector loans so let us make a table and see the differences loans from banks and cooperatives come under formal sector loans whereas the inf informal sector loans include loans from money lenders traders relatives friends etc formal sources of credit are supervised by some formal government organizations in india reserve bank of india supervises the functioning of formal sources of credit whereas there is no organization to supervise informal sources of credit they can lend at whatever interest rate they choose formal sources follow rules and regulations formed by the government whereas the informal sources do not follow any rules and regulations one of the most important point is that they charge a low rate of interest formal sources of credit charge a very low rate of interest whereas the informal sources charge a very high rate of interest the terms of credit are fair and reasonable in formal sources of credit the informal sources impose very tough and even unreasonable terms of credit on the borrowers this is an important question which may be asked to you distinguish between formal and informal sources of credit then you must make a table and write as shown in the slide now let us see graph 1 given in your book what does it show it shows sources of credit for rural households in india in 2012 it shows the variety of sources of loan you can find here commercial banks cooperative societies landlords money lenders traders relatives friends etc it also shows how much of loans they have given if you read the graph you can find out how much credit is coming from formal sources and how much is coming from informal sources now let us discuss something about reserve bank of india as i said in india the rbi supervises the functioning of formal sources of loans so in what ways rbi supervises the functioning of formal sources of credit we have already read that banks maintain a minimum cash balance out of the deposits they receive the rbi monitors that the banks actually maintain the cash balance this is point number 1 two the rbi also sees that banks give loans not just to profit making businesses and traders but also to small cultivators small scale industries to small borrowers etc Periodically banks have to submit information to the RBI on how much they are lending to whom they are lending and at what rate of interest they are lending etc The rate of interest of the formal lenders is decided by the RBI so normally the interest rates are very low compared to the formal lenders most of the informal lenders charge a very high rate of interest on loans I hope you have understood how RBI supervises the functioning of formal sources of credit. Now, 
I will come to the last question that I chose to discuss today. Cheap and affordable credit is crucial for country's development. This is a very very important question from the board examination point of view. Higher cost of borrowings means a larger part of the earnings of the borrowers is used to repay the loan. Hence, borrowers have very less income left for themselves. We have seen this in the case of Shamal in the previous video. Suppose he takes 1000 rupees as loan and is able to make 2000 rupees out of it. Now he has to pay back the principal amount first. So 1000 rupees is gone straight away. Now let us see the interest rate at the rate of 60% per annum. This comes to rupees 600. So 600 rupees will go as interest. So total amount that is repaid is 1600 rupees. So what is left with him? Only 400 rupees. Now imagine he had taken the loan from bank like Arun at the rate of 8.5% per annum. In that case, he had to pay rupees 1000 first plus 8.5% of 1000 rupees that is 85 rupees. How much would he be saving in this case? He would be saving 915 rupees. I hope you have understood by what I said. Higher cost of borrowing means a large part of earnings of the borrower is used to repay the loan. Hence, borrowers have very less income left for themselves. Next, in certain cases, the interest rate of borrowing can mean that the amount to be repaid is greater than the income of the borrowers. This could lead to increasing debt and finally, the borrower will be caught in the debt trap. This is what happened in the case of Rama. We have seen this in the previous video. Thirdly, people who might wish to start an enterprise by borrowing may not do so because of the high cost of borrowings. They just abandon the idea because the rate of interest is too high. For these reasons, we say that banks and cooperatives need to lend more. This would lead to higher incomes and many people could then borrow cheaply for a variety of needs. People could grow crops, they could do business, they could set up small scale industries, etc. They could set up new industries or trade in goods. Thus, cheap and affordable credit is crucial for the country's development. Let us now see formal and informal credit. Who gets what? Let us now see graph 2. It shows the importance of formal and informal formal sources of credit in urban areas. Here the people are divided into four groups from poor to rich. The blue color shows the percentage of loans from informal sector. The purple color shows percentage of loans from the formal sector. You can see that 85% of the loan taken in the poor households in urban areas are from informal sources. As you move to the right, you will see that in the case of household with fewer assets, 53% people take loan from informal sources. This reduces to 28% in case of well-off households and finally, if you see the rich households, only 10% of their loans are from informal sources. What does it indicate? Let us analyze this. It indicates that the rich households are availing cheap credits from the formal lenders, whereas the poor households have to pay a heavy price for taking loans. Just like rural areas, loans from informal sources carry a high rate of interest and so they do little to increase the income of the borrowers. So what should be the solution? The solution should be that banks and cooperatives increase their lending particularly in rural areas so that the dependence on informal sources of credit reduces. Secondly, while formal sector loans need to expand, it is also necessary that everyone receives the loan. At present, it is the richer households who receive formal credit 
whereas the poor have to depend on the informal sources. So what are the reasons for granted not being available to the rural poor? We will discuss them in the next class. I hope you have understood the topic properly, particularly the three questions that I stated in the beginning. Let us now see the probable questions from this topic. 1. Distinguish between formal and informal sources of credit. Question number 2. In what ways Reserve Bank of India supervise the functioning of banks? Question number 3. Give any two examples of informal sources of credit. This is one more question asked in 2018. Why is cheap and affordable credit important for the country's development? Explain any three reasons. This was again a three mass question asked in 2018. How can formal sector loans be made beneficial for the poor farmers and workers? Suggest any five measures. This was asked as a five mass question in 2016. Prepare these questions. They carry a high probability in the board examinations again. Now you read your textbook for better understanding of the topic. Lastly, if you like this video, please subscribe to it by pressing the subscribe button given below. Thank you.